we're ready to uh, begin our worship service. Our hymns are printed this morning. And just a reminder about the uh, COVID guidelines and things. Uh, we have to keep our mask on for the entire service. If you're eating or drinking and if you're distance from others, you can remove your mask. If you come up to read, you can take your mask off just for the reading part. And uh, of course, the solo singers are allowed to remove their mask if they're distance from people as well. Uh, other than that, uh, let's enjoy our service this morning. As we say, our hymns are printed. And our first hymn this morning, Lord, I lift your name on high. Good morning. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to our time of worship and celebration. It is certainly good to see everybody out this morning. Uh, we've even run out of bulletins, so if you can safely share, invite you to do so. And that is a very good sign of a good morning together. This, of course, is the first Sunday of the church's year. We call it Advent 1. We have four Sundays now, of course, leading up to the celebration of Christmas. Just a few things very quickly to touch on. Of course, just to remind you of the Tree of Memories coming up on December the 19th, Christmas Memorials and Flowers, details in the bulletins. Uh, Bakeless Bake Sale, there's an envelope out for that. That was a major fundraiser at one point. We used to bring baked goodies up on Confederation Hill, uh, but we've since stopped that. Many different things have made that complicated. So if you're able to help out in lieu of that uh, major fundraiser, then certainly appreciate it. Not to forgive our outreach programs as well. Our food bank, as always, uh, is in need, but also this time of the year now is the Christmas hampers. And so see info as well is that in on your, uh, your bulletin. The Blessing Bags is another major outreach project. This is two years in a row, and uh, we are giving different items to the gathering place where we need uh, toiletries, also men's and ladies' new undergarments, also collecting things such as masks, gloves, scarves, and socks that have to be, uh, have to be new items. Uh, FateWorks program, this coming uh, Thursday night, hopefully at 7.30, if you tune in on Facebook Live, uh, you will see uh, our very own Tracy, who is out today sick, and she'll be hosting a community group on Thursday evening. During our service today, we're slowly getting back to more normal. Uh, we're allowed to come forward for communion now. Uh, we're not allowed to kneel and be together at the rail because, of course, the touching and things like that. Uh, but churches are started receiving people forward, and people are receiving as they come forward. So this morning, we're going to have two stations. I'll be on one side. Reverend Dave will be on the other. So like we've done this before, if you've been here, just come up to center. 
and receive communion. You can take your mask, just slip it up on your mask, and then you can go back to your seats. And of course, just to be cautious, you know, people in your own bubble, we kind of take a little distance apart. But as the regulations are now, uh, there's no need of social distancing if we're scanned in and if we wear a mask. The only reason we have tape on the seats to separate us is that we have our cafe open in the morning, and so we still eat and drink, so we need to be safely apart when we do that. But as we get close to Christmas Eve, we'll even be removing the uh, tape from the seats. And I'll invite um, Sylvia to come forward. She has a couple of words with regards to an upcoming concert on December the 4th. Coming very fast. Why don't we see it for a few moments, you can. Good morning, everyone. Good um, morning. I'm up here, not because I like talking up here, I like talking, but not up here. <laughs> but I felt <clears throat> there was a need to say a few things about our concert. Uh, it's coming up on Saturday, December the 4th. Uh, we tried it last year, but due to COVID, unfortunately, we couldn't get it off the ground. We did have one the year before. It was a big success. We had uh, a lot of people come. Very positive feedback. Everybody seemed to have a good night. Um, everybody seems to be getting back to normal now. We're going to restaurants and we're shopping and we're going to movies and lots of other things. So with a lot of hard work that people are putting in to this, we thought, why can't we do something here? Uh, the part that's discouraging is that the ticket sales are just not moving very well. Um, with the seats fired off the way they are, every second seat, we can sell 100 tickets and we're nowhere near that. We're not even nearing the halfway mark yet. So, um, and a lot of people that bought tickets are actually in the concert, so they're not gonna be out there sitting in that audience. So, uh, it's, it's like we came through COVID, wishing, praying, hoping that we were all gonna get back to normal, and now we're getting back to normal. It's like there's no momentum. Uh, we, we really need to get that back. Um, we have advertised on social media. Reverend Byron's gone out to the radio stations. So we are advertising, but we really need your help to please consider coming out on the night. Mention it to your family, your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors. This is the safest space as you're gonna get. Uh, we're gonna be vax passing on the door on the night, so you got the security that everybody here is gonna be fully vaccinated. We're uh, gonna have our seats, leave it like they are, half barred off, and we're gonna be running a canteen on the night. So we're selling goodies. We're gonna have tickets on a Christmas uh, cake package. We've got music, uh, singing, skits, people forgetting their lines. Uh, we've got lots of stuff lined up, so lots of people put a lot of work into it. So we'll ask you to please consider uh, coming out on that night. Uh, I have tickets here today. I'm at the back of the church. I have them at home. If you want to reach out to me that way, email me, call me, put your money in the drop box downstairs, e-transfer, whatever way you like to buy a ticket, I will reserve them for you and make sure you get them. Um, you can purchase them on the night where we're trying to pre-sell so we can eliminate as much as possible the handling of money on the night But yes, yeah, certainly they're at the door and they're ten dollars each So, you know come out. It's not just about a fundraiser Which we really need but it's about community and socializing and getting out and doing something that we haven't been able to do for a long time so please consider coming out Talk to your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers, and please, let's try to make this a success. Hopefully, we'll see you on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. I invite you to please stand, and I believe Ethan is going to do the Advent wreath and come forward. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, 
of Advent, the Sunday of hope. Our hope is in God and in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the one appointed by God to be judge of all things. He is the one through whom God has promised to save and redeem his people. We light this candle today to remind us that he is our hope and the hope of the world. We thank God for the promises he has made to us and for the light he has brought into the world. Let us pray. O God of hope, Emmanuel, God with us, we pray you to send your light into our hearts. Help us to be ready for the day and the hour of Christ appearing. Live in us and help us to live in you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, touch us. Transform us so that our worship, our celebration, our time in preparation may be pleasing unto you, both now and forevermore. Amen. Before we go to Sunday school, uh, we have one of our songs. Just a reminder, of course, depending on the number of young people we have, uh, we're hoping to have a program on December the 19th. So if you know somebody interested, please let us know. So let's sing along to one of our Sunday school songs. <laughs>
I invite you, if you wish, to join our leaders in the Sunday School program. And if you're still here, you know, I want to join the Sunday School program, maybe seated for the reading. reading from the book of Jeremiah, <coughs> excuse me, uh, chapter 33, verses 14 to 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm is number 25, and it's printed in your bulletin. The refrain is, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and for you I wait all the day. To you, to you O Lord, I lift up my soul. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Our gradual hymn this morning is hymn number two, Go Tell It on the Mountain. with you and also with you the holy gospel of our lord jesus christ from the 21st chapter of luke verses 25 to 36 glory to you lord jesus christ 
Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth's distressed among the nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with powers and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole world. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and stand before the Son of Man, the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear God, from our everyday worries and joys, we have come to this place this morning to be together as your family, brothers and sisters. Be with us in these few moments that the words we have heard spoke in our presence may become a part of our lives, that we may be a presence of your hope to this dark world. In your son's name we pray, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. There was a tribe of people many, many years ago who had fallen on dark times. The food supply had shrunk and many people were becoming ill. The elderly chief of the tribe, with his illness and his hunger and age, came near the end of his days. And so he called, along with his leadership, his three sons, by his side, and he inquired upon them about their willingness to pick up after his time had been done. And all three would do whatever they could to provide leadership to their people. And he says, now I must pick one, to be the chief. So I invite the three of you to go for a few days, and then return, and then I will decide who will be the chief of the people. So the three of them went into the forest, and the wilderness, and the land, and they spent three days thinking and doing things, and then they returned to their father's side. The first son said, Look, Dad, I've, I found food to feed our people, and he smiled, and everybody did. The other son said, I found plants to form into medicine so to heal our people, and everybody smiled again. The third son came to the bedside with nothing in his hands, and he said, My son, what have you brought? And he said, Father, I have wandered three days in the forest and the wilderness, and all I could think about is that dream I keep having over and over every single night of our peeping people living once more in a land where they are well fed and where everybody is well. With that, everybody smiled, but also the chief. And he said, You will be a leader of my people because you have brought back the most important thing of all. You have brought back hope. The past several weeks, darkness has slowly been crowding out the daylight. Days are getting shorter and nights much longer. With that comes a change in our mindset, sometimes a way of living. It can affect your mind and your body and your very spirit. But there's other darkness as well, things that can come into our own lives that we could call darkness. This past year, there may be 
a wrong turn you've taken and now things are changed. You may have given up too early on something and now you have regrets. You or somebody that is close to you may have become ill, become sick, and now your trouble hurt it. You may have lost somebody the past while and now the tears still flow freely from your eyes. Sometimes things can happen beyond our control, but still you worry. And just like the, the darkness is getting more so every day and the evenings are longer, so too does this darkness overtake the light in our own lives. We become overwhelmed. Sometimes we get down, our mood changes, we're not so, so happy anymore, and we're not so healthy in mind, body, and spirit. Yet still, there is another kind of darkness, a darkness that comes our way as a people, a darkness that we all share. These are difficult times for many in our country. Just the weather alone, for example, have brought much trouble. Out in BC, they had a summer filled with fires, and now, of course, flooding that seems to keep going with new rain. In our own province, of course, the southwest coast of our province, very familiar with wind. Now, when I lived there, 180 kilometers was not impossible, but with the rain, it was just too much, and now people have struggles to deal with the situation in the aftermath of the storm. And, of course, the top of it all off is our COVID situation. Just when things seem to be getting better, a new variant comes along down another part of the world, this time South Africa, and seems to be spreading. A fifth wave may be possible this winter. Just this past week I've seen a news show and it was just like a heartbeat. Wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and now they may be predicting yet another bump of wave five. Something that never seems to leave us, no matter how much we look towards tomorrow. So putting all that together, it can cause us to see darkness around us, changing seasons, events in our daily life, world events and happenings can close in on us. And there's no doubt things are changing. The world is changing. Some things, of course, are bottom up. Some things are just on pause for now. And some things we may never see the same again or ever. In our gospel today, Jesus talks about end times and darkness. He says there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the seas and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming up on the world. The powers of the heavens will be shaken. The heavens will be shaken and people will faint and tremble with fear. But as always, as Jesus speaks about fear and darkness, he always speaks about hope. He says, stand tall. Basically, people of faith, stand tall, raise up your heads, because I am coming near. As people of faith, we are always people of hope. As we enter the season of Advent this very day, we enter the darkest time of the year. Advent it's a time of darkness, a time of waiting, but it's also a time of hope. For we know the story now that almost 2,000 years or so, or a little bit more so ago, the world was a dark place filled with worries and troubles. And on one dark night, under a bright star, a child was born. And amongst many things that he was, he was a light in a dark world a light in the darkness. But as we know that evening, most people did not notice. They were bogged down by worries and troubles of this world, and all they could see was darkness. And a small group of people saw the light of the star and the light of Jesus as he was born into this world. As a people of faith, let us hold our heads high and look for hope to a better day. Let us not get bogged down with the worries of this life, distracted by the busyness of this coming season, and let us look for the light of that hope. 
So once again, leaving us with his words, Jesus' words to us as people of faith, stand tall, raise up your heads, because I am coming near. Dear God, during this time of the year, the darkest, we also bring the darkness of the world, the darkness of our lives into this space at this time. And we know as people of faith, you will come to us and walk with us every step of the way that we need not worry, we need not fear, for you are with us and you are before us as a light in the darkness. In your name we pray, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Let us now confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now continue with the prayers of the people. As we keep awake for the coming of the Lord, let us offer prayers to God who prepares a light for our path, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the coming of Jesus Christ in power and glory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the, wis for the coming of wisdom to teach and guide us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the coming of Emmanuel, the hope of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of the world and for the, our unity in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world and the faithful in every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the nations and all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, peace, and freedom among peoples of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For travelers, for the sick and the suffering, for the hungry and the oppressed, and for those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dying and the dead, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Joining our voices with the Blessed Virgin Mary and with all the saints of God, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O rising sun, brightness of light eternal, son of justice, come and shine on those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Glory to you forever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as you are able in your own safe way, or whatever you want to do in your own role, not going to judge, you're fine. Peace of the Lord be always with you.
Our offering hymn this morning, well known, what amazing grace, hymn number three, number three. within us the expectation of the coming of your Son. Accept all we offer you this day and sustain us with your promise of eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in the fullness of time came among us to be our flesh and opened to us the way of salvation. Now we watch for the day when he will come again in power and great triumph to judge this world, that we, without shame or fear, may rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, merciful Father, not as we ought, but as we are able, because in your tender love you gave the world your only Son, in order that the world might be saved through him. He made you known by taking the form of a servant, healing the sick, liberating the oppressed, reaching out to the lost. Betrayed, reviled, and nailed to the cross, 
He confronted the power of sin and disarmed it forever. In his offering of himself, he became the perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the world. Redeemed by Christ, we have been adopted as your children. By your pardon, you have made us worthy to praise you. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus at supper with his friends took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. In obedience to him and with grateful hearts, we approach our holy table, remembering our Savior's sacrifice and rejoicing in his victory. Confident in his sovereign purpose, we declare our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit on us as we receive this bread and this cup. May we partake of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and feed on him in our hearts by faith and thanksgiving. May we be renewed in his life, filled with love and strengthened in our will to serve others. And make of our lives, we pray, a pure and holy sacrifice acceptable to you, knitting us together as one in your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And how as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God.
May now stand as we pray. God, for whom we wait, you have fed us with the bread of eternal life. Keep us ever watchful, that we may be ready to stand before the Son of Man. We ask this in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn, hymn number five, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.